Thanks for letting me speak today. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Do we have written testimony from you? I do not. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm here today. My name is Kristen. I'm also from Fairfield. And um, my process in this system that we're talking about today started when my second child was in utero in 2002. I'm 11 years in. Um, and for the most part, I will say very positively right from the get-go, I have two spectacular boys who are now 11 and 13 who are spend time, as much time as they can with their father and who are with, they're with their dad three weekends a month, but they're with me all the other time and that they have grown into be well insulated boys from the super high conflict pre during and post-divorce process. Um, I'm here to speak today on behalf of other moms like me and other peop dads like me who have felt that the system has not supported them throughout the process and who um, don't understand how it's gotten to be this bad. Um, I never I've never, I've insulated my boys. I think my ex-husband has done that too, but our post-divorce um, conflict is 99% is financial. But in the midst of trying to keep your head above water, the last thing you need is somebody who has all the resources, a David and Goliath kind of a situation, who has maliciously and with intent to harm created false accusations of unfit parenting which created a whole nother three-year conflict in the midst of this. We never made it to Middletown, but that was one second away. Um, the total nut for this is, from soup to nuts, I think over $500,000. Um, that includes attorneys. That includes um, probably my ex's attorneys. I gather there are five or six constantly um, on retainer just for fun. Um, I am pro se, I'm self-representative, uh, self-representing at this point because I, I don't have the resources anymore, they're depleted. Um, all of my alimony that I was supposed to have to get a master's in education, I'm a preschool teacher, I would have liked to have gotten that, has gone to fund mandatory GALs, mandatory parenting coordinators, which I understand from the last gentleman can be a fantastic option, and I thought it was going to be a golden ticket for me to have a forum with a third party who would advocate solely for my children. When the GAL was not able to, she recommended this person, and yet, just like everybody else has said today, very little teeth in the recommendations. If the adversarial high conflict, conflict addicted ex-spouse refuses to comply with those recommendations and then they go to the GAL and then they go back to court, they, there's no way that they can help me. I have to go again myself. And frankly, after 11 years, not just financially, I don't know if I have the testicular fortitude <laughs> to go back again. And yet, so here we are. We did hear the bell. If you could wrap up. And yes. I, 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 I'm interested to hear if your experience with the court process, um, when you talk about the length of it, were there um, what you would consider unnecessary delays in bringing those, those delays things to the court? When, you, when you're up against um, six other attorneys who have to be their president with a very powerful, very um, well-funded machine of defense, I guess, um, and yet when there's a custody battle mounted, when they live with me 90% of the time, the, there was no problem before. Um, and it's, it was all debunked, and yet some of those same issues continue to come up on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis in terms of compliance or noncompliance for their medical care, for payments and such like that. Um, the biggest concern I have is that there is no um, accountability, there is no penalty for people throughout the system, whether it's the high conflict adversarial parent, whether it's the therapist, whether it's the PC, whether it's the GAL, whether it's 
family relations, whether it's focused on kids who keep making recommendations and who never follow through. Again, no teeth. So that's my main message today that I feel very, um, like the gentleman said before, bereft of any support with real backbone to help stop somebody from continuing conflict and the PC has allowed for the conflict by not doing anything. The GAL has allowed for the continuance. There is no disincentivization, if that's a word, to keep my ex from continuing a high conflict thing, which I've been very successful. I have young kids. The day that they're crafty enough to look in the public records and find out is the day I'm going to feel sorry for them. And it should never have been allowed to get this far. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Mr. Weissmuller. Um, you, you mentioned that it's high conflict and ongoing, and it sounds incredibly long. Um, the, the order itself has not been modified through this time? Uh, three, diff three different modifications. Three different modifications. Brought on by um, obfuscation of the real issue, which is, which is financial. Okay. So, and you, you, you know, unfit, and I understand that the courts have a fiduciary duty and a moral and ethical obligation to investigate when they feel that a child is in danger. But if a child is truly in danger, and after three years of a custody battle, proven to be perfectly fantastic where they are with no modifications except for, you know, more parenting time, which I freely give, why, why wouldn't that have a penalty attached to it? when college funds are gone, when foreclosed houses are gone, when every asset is gone. And I feel, I feel that that's unfair. I think it's egregious. So some of the things that have been uh, talked about amongst the task force, um, and you can tell me if these things took place in your case, um, case assignments so that a single judge follows the case, would that have helped you in your circumstance? I think it would have. I went through the Stanford system. Um, the people and family relations at, in Stanford are probably the one and only resource I had that was effective. We had mandatory psych evaluations for $26,000 a piece. We, I mean, out hair follicle testing, um, it, it, it didn't matter what. But at some, there was no point during that time that somebody said, that's enough. It's, it's pretty clear what's happening here. And, and nobody fought for me. I fought for my kids. I fought to not be um, put in a homeless shelter and, you know, lose everything so that my ex could say, well, I don't have to pay child support then they can just come live with me. He's not really having, interested in having them five days a week. He's never had them during the weekdays for 11 years. The, um, the other thing is the, uh, the, the fast track obviously didn't take, post-judgment, there's no mechanism that I'm, I'm hearing for a dedicated contempt calendar. Is this, is this contempt related or was it just revisiting the entire case? Um, partly revisiting Sutanats. Part of it um, is contempt. If I, if I pull um, the contempt card, it's met with, you know, all out boots on the ground. And again, as a single parent, five days a week, taking care of two kids, working, taking days off like this today from my school, I have to hire a substitute. It's. It's, it takes a lot to get through the system, and I don't wish it on my worst enemy. I don't. And there was no support for me. There was, you will go to this GAL, you will pay them $425 an hour, you will go to this PC who gets 350 an hour, it is in the document, and the person who has, whether it's a bona fide bone to pick or not, I still have to pay. So, as I understand it, you were not given an option as to who the GAL would be? Correct. Were, were you given an opportunity to object to the dollars per hour? I did. I was told that was, um, that, that couldn't be a factor. I was, I was told you have to pay it. Financial constraint can't be a reason. And uh, is there an order that clearly defines what the GAL's duties are to earn this money? 
No, there is no specific checklist on what their scope of influence, scope of recommendation, neither does that exist in my agreement for my parenting coordinator. There's, there's nothing except it's outside their purview to testify that they have, they can make a recommendation and that's it. And yet the recommendations don't hold any water because unless I take those recommendations to court, it's the onus is on me to either hire an attorney or go myself and have it last for another, I don't know, three years. Out of all the time that you've been going to court, how many meaningful court days have you had in 11 years? Maybe a dozen. So maybe one a year. Maybe. On average. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. think those are, uh, those aren't fair numbers for the industry I'm in. Right. And I have a question about the attorneys. You talk about coming out in force. I mean, we went to mandatory training when we started receiving federal funds on domestic violence. And uh, we were taught that if you have six attorneys on one side, you should be looking for controlling behavior. Correct. Are there more than one, is there more than one attorney that crosses the bar? Is there an attorney uh, second there seat? There are six. Six. Consistently. Sometimes and the, and the judge allows four. six attorneys on that side? And then there's me. Okay. But there's no penalty for those attorneys for continuing, continuing, continuing year after year while my kids, while I pay for everything, and then, you know, there's no, there's, there's no penalty for my ex to say, well, that's what I really believed, even though it's been debunked. Now, so on the, uh, it fair. sounds like there's a, an extreme financial disparity between one household and the other, from what you're I'm saying. I'm a preschool teacher, and I teach special needs kids, and okay. then I have little jobs on the side babysitting. And my um, ex is a global, worldwide partner principal. Okay. Put it that way. Um, Sounds like it makes money. Uh, I was just going to ask about the apportionment of fees. Did the court apportion the GAL fees anyway? 50-50. 50-50? Yeah. Did you ask that they look at the... Um, I did. An equitable distribution? I have. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, any other questions? And I actually just really want to announce that we are on about to have call speaker 17 and we were just handed an updated list and we have a total of 75 so we are like one seventh through Thank the list so much and I, I, I'm not I, if anyone has a question they can ask it but I just want to alert the room I know we're giving people an opportunity but it really will be difficult for the people lower down on the list thank you so much for sharing your story